rebuild a house for you, Sally, when neither you or your family will come and take a look at it until the very end of the project? Can you imagine? How many here built, built a house? All right, you guys tell me if I told you you could not come to that house that you built until the end of the project and walk in. Okay? That would be interesting reaction. You'd be like, here, yeah, right. So, absolutely need you to engage. So, an engagement plan. If you don't have, if you found your stakeholders, know who they are, and all you've done is just documented them, but not come up with an engagement plan that engages them, there's a problem. Use cases. Um, this is an interesting slide, and of course, if you if you fill out your evaluations, I'll send you a copy of all of all of this. But I just want to show you pictures now because I know we'll be running out of time pretty soon. So, a use case diagram's goal is to tell me who wants to use the system. When I'm brainstorming roles, remember I told you we kind of do a role visioning session at the beginning? That's what I want to know. Okay, who would be the users? Who would be impacted? Systems are considered roles. External systems, other systems that need something from the system that you're going to be working with. They have a need. They just don't happen to be a human being. Does that make sense? So system X needs a daily file transferred with member information. That's a need that we need to identify. Um, another example. Who's the, who's the users and what are the top goals? I love use case diagrams for high level visioning. They tell me who are the roles and what are their goals from the system. They begin to give me, remember those themes? It's one level below the themes. They start to give me some of those, what I call medium level features. Trust me, they all still need to be broken down. But at least I'm starting to get that from a user perspective. Um, we talked about organizing and prioritizing. Surveys, when you do send out a survey to a user or to a stakeholder, here are some things that you should ask about. First, what is your role as it relates to XYZ system? Are you a user? Are you a manager of the users? Are you a salesperson who sells that system? Are you an agent who resells? What is your role? How do you currently use it? What are the key goals? What existing issues, concerns, and characteristics? Really simple, if you make the survey too detailed, they won't fill it out. So if you're trying to get a lot of people to give you feedback, you know, you gotta make it a little bit simpler for them to do that. Shadowing, of course, we just talked about, which is extremely important. Face-to-face um, -face interviews allow you for a deep understanding of their needs. Shadowing, though, allows you to watch their behavior. If you never shadow any users, trust me, you don't know what, how they behave, how long it takes them. I actually had one project, this was really interesting, where the business user had a huge problem with a report, and their requirement was, I need you to improve the performance of the report. You guys ever got that one before, the, the report's too slow? When we finally dug a little bit deeper to find out what was going on, the report was actually returning back 4,000 records. So what was the right question to ask at that point? Is it, how can we make it return 4,000 records efficiently, <coughs> or is it, why are you looking at 4,000 records? Right, yeah, second one, right. Why are you looking at 4,000 records? Well, it's because after I get the 4,000 records, I do additional filtering to really get the ones that I want. Hmm, nice, so it's like a database for you, like a mini database, and you're doing additional querying? Okay, nice. How about we just give you the ability to filter from the very beginning so you can just get the 10, 15 records you want, and we don't have to deal with 4,000 records coming. I mean, who really taps through and looks at 4,000 records? So you could fix the wrong problem if you've never watched them because they'll never even tell you that. Like they'll never, they'll just say it's a very slow report. We just need to make it look, work better. Personas. This may work in your business industry. Personas is a new, a really a creative marketing technique for really, really understanding the groups of roles and users you're dealing with. Um, it's sort of like, as a business, we need to, anybody here in the insurance world? I work with so many insurance fields, it seems like half, uh, uh, half of uh, Omaha is in the insurance area. So maybe you want to start categorizing the folks as the type of members that you would really have. The young member and their needs, you know, the married couple that just has new kids. Maybe it's one, a persona that represents an older uh, person and what their needs would be. A persona is actually putting like an avatar, it's creating a fake name and a fake personality and characteristics that you would always use within your projects to refer to somebody, such as, well, you don't want to really use John Smith, but Marilyn Smith will be an elderly lady who needs this, 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 and that, and they would be a typical person. Why do you use personas? Just to keep these people in mind, basically, to make sure that we've taken care of them. 
every company usually has specific target users for a product, right? And when you when you pick your top six or seven personas and you create them, um, you actually put pictures of them. I've seen people go as far as putting pictures and doing things like this, you know, putting a whole description and putting a picture of a lady, and then basically we always ask the question, have we taken care of Francis Miller? You know, you know what Francis is like, you know who Francis and what she wants. Would Francis be able to use the system right now? Do you have help for her, right? Will she be able to use it? Is it big enough? Maybe Francis is also a disabled person, right? So personas is a way to stop talking about users as users and make them into real people so that you can kind of take care of them in the middle of your project, right? Here's another example of a role matrix that you can put together. So Adam is a freshman student. His characteristics, needs, what he likes, and what his concerns are. It's one more tool or template that you can use to start saying, oh, this is how I would document my users in terms of giving them a name, like an avatar, and putting some behavior behind what they would expect. So when you do have your final stakeholder analysis, that's kind of a way that you could, a very simple template that you could use um, to make sure that you've taken care of their needs. Questions so far? Make sense? This idea? How many of you do stakeholder analysis? How many of you get to do some of this or all of this at the beginning of a project, or have given time at the beginning of a project to do this? Okay, very good. How much of this do you do? I'm just curious. You can just say out loud. Um, similar, different? Very similar. What's the benefit? Have you seen results from it? Have you been on projects where you haven't been able to do stakeholder analysis? Can you just kind of give us a before and after? or a Well, the projects where we, you know, we're in a hurry, we're fast tracking it, so we're not going to waste time doing the stakeholder analysis. Uh, you miss stakeholders, you end up having to do a lot of rework. It's, a, it's just a disaster. And how big of an investment is it up front, from a time perspective, to do a little bit of this? Oh, you do stakeholder analysis in three hours if you have the right people together. And that's true. Depending on how much of this you want to do, it's, it's almost like an activity. It really doesn't take that long, you know? You could make this take two days. And trust me, two days would be well invested. That would include shadowing, meetings, watching them, doing the surveys, everything. Two full days and 16 hours total of investment, right? Um, it would be very well invested. So it's just, it's, you know, the importance of this session, I think, is to really emphasize Please try not to skip this. Um, whether they give you time or they don't give you time, you will probably be able at least to find four hours to just get some of this stuff going. So very good. Um, process modeling. I always say that in order to find requirements and to look at it from all angles, you've got to come at it from the user angle, which is who are the users and what do they want from the system? That's one angle. The other one is the process angle. What are the services or what are the processes that are provided by the system and what are the steps, major steps that need to be taken, okay? Um, process models are interesting though because I, I really got to tell you about some things that I see. You can do the same, when we're doing requirements gathering, you know how I said we would be like visioning or talking about high level requirements and then we'll jump into the details? I can look at a process diagram and tell you the same thing just happened to that diagram. We're talking about high level steps to get a process done and then somebody had really detailed information about one step and then boom, 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 if then, else, if then, else, all over the place at the bottom. Have you guys seen these kind of? They become very confusing to read. Okay, so try to catch yourself when you're doing process diagramming to not draw a high level process or maybe it's a medium level process and also include for each one of them detailed information. It becomes too difficult to read. But process diagramming, if you're very new to it, if you haven't done it before, this is a wonderful website that kind of just gives you the beginning, the basics of it. Um, but otherwise, just here's examples. What would you call this one? This is a swim lane. And swim lane process diagrams focus on what? Cross-functional Cross role base. It could be system based, right? You know, who gets to do what, basically. It's almost like you're taking that use case diagram, which is who wants to do what, what's their goal, but you're taking it into more detail. And you're saying, well, this person will do this first, and then the system will do that, and then this other person will do this, and then we do that. So it's a very role.